Hey guys, Legion here and welcome to a new Jurassic World Evolution 2 speed build. This one is the second one from the four species we're going to be building for from the Cretaceous Predator pack and today we're going to be tackling the Concavenator. The Concavenator is my second favorite creature from the entire pack. Uh, that's why we are building for it second after the Uteraptor, which dropped yesterday. If you haven't checked out that build, this is the perfect time for you to do so after you finish this video, of course. Um, and if you want to stay tuned for the next two uh, builds that we're going to be doing for the Gigantoraptor and Tarbosaurus, subscribe to the channel and also leave a like on the video while you're at it and maybe leave a comment to help out the algorithm and help out my video. But now that you've done that, let's talk about the build. So for the Concavenator I decided to build something out of the mortar walls that we got in the mortar DLC uh, one year ago. Uh, last December we actually got the DLC and I remember how exciting it was getting all these new pieces that are that were really so different from what we had at the, uh, at the time. Uh, later of course uh, this year we also got the Jurassic Park fossil walls uh, that kind of fall into the same category of having like walls in the game. Uh, but these low mortar walls were awesome to build uh, viewing areas and small exhibits and those other walls just they look really awesome. So what we're sort of going for uh, with this whole exhibit is sort of a ruins kind of look. So this is basically supposed to be uh, some kind of ruins in the uh, in the desert uh, that were repurposed from the park to actually house the concavenator. I personally think that the concavenator really fits uh, pretty well into a desert exhibit like this and that's why I decided to go for something like this with the concavenator. But I could also see this uh, dinosaur live in uh, like any biome pretty much in this game. Uh, but I just decided to go for the desert to make it a little, little bit more interesting and not just go for maybe like an alpine or tiger biome because I already did that for the uh, Uteraptor. In one of the areas of the sort of ruin structure I decided to uh, do double layered walls and in between you have the path and this sort of gives the guests uh, a feel that they're actually also inside of this uh, ruined structure, sort of the, this ancient temple or something. Um, and it, I think it uh, gives the quite the cool vibe and then also at the end I built like a little guest, guest section and in another area I built a raised viewing platform, uh, basically a cliff uh, sort of as a natural barrier for the concavenator and at the top you have another guest section that you could of, of course also incorporate into your park. Um, basically you have to see this build as um, one exhibit from a park and then you have like these multiple uh, uh, pieces where you can connect it to your park. For example that plaza at the top or that entrance at the beginning where I put the uh, banner from the Jurassic Park uh, decoration set. I personally really had uh, a blast building with all these decorations. Uh, the last time I really built a park uh, pretty much all only using or heavily using these decorations was back when the pack released. Uh, that's when I built a sort of Malta the uh, theme park and now I decided to do sort of a similar thing uh, but just in the desert uh, for one exhibit only but I think it, it looks really cool. I really like how the end result turned out. Uh, you're also gonna see that later and Another thing that I also incorporated were the uh, monorail arches. I basically built like a circle uh, with them and then I lowered that into the ground and that's where I put the water. Because in the desert you wouldn't really usually have water that much and I think like that uh, it sort of looks more like um, maybe like a meteor crash or something was uh, there and then uh, the structure was built around that or maybe even that structure was just built around that and there was like a well or something there or just uh, the people who made the park intentionally put that there uh, and the water really just feels like integrated and has like a purposeful place. And then pretty much on the opposite side of the exhibit I put the meat feeder uh, with some viewing galleries and some uh, fences where the guests can also look through and uh, I also incorporated a tour into this exhibit uh, and sort of a safari tour or something. Uh, of course that would be uh, quite a bit uh, dangerous, quite too dangerous I would say, even for like something like the concavenator because they're like a meat-eating dinosaur, you know, that would be very dangerous for the guests. But I think it's fine, uh, you don't ha really have to go with too much realism for something like this and maybe you could say that the concavenators are trained to not attack the humans and they also, they, you know, they would have food in their exhibits at all time and they would al always be well fed so they probably wouldn't even start like attacking at the humans that are sitting in the car. Currently you can see me build uh, the guest session that I just previously mentioned and at first when building this I actually completely forgot about building like the double layered Malta walls but then I uh, later integrated that and even with like a little uh, piece of different colored path and I think that gives a nice little differentia uh, differentiation or something to that. 
and then you sort of have um, the guests you can first go through the sort of tunnel uh, pretty much uh, just without a roof and then uh, you turn to the left and then you actually uh, get to a space with uh, some amenities and like a toilet and I'm also still using a lot of the new decorations uh, in this build, uh, especially the ben benches. I uh, am using a lot of benches in this. Um, I don't know how uh, much I'm going to be using the benches in the future, but now currently, uh, since they're new, I'm using them a lot. And I think there's just like a lot of areas where I'm like, oh yeah, I can put some get benches here. Oh yeah, some some benches would fit here real nice, you know? You know what I mean? Uh, I I just want to ask you guys: Is is that the same for you? Are you also using the benches as much as I am? You know, uh, write this down in the comments below uh, and tell me how much you're using the benches and if you if you're even finding any use with them or if you also finding use with the other decorations, just like I am. But now coming back to the concavenator, uh, like I previously said, I'm really, really uh, happy with it. Uh, it's one of my favorite creatures in the game and my favorite one from the DLC, like I've previously said. Um, the first one, of course, being the Uteraptor. And I would for sure say that the concavenator is like in my top five favorite species in the entire game. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just really cool. It has a lot of character and it's, of course, uh, really, really unique. It has uh, a special size. It's sort of similar in size to the Herrerasaurus and Australovenator, but it also has a very different posture at that. It's probably more similar to the um, Cryolophosaurus, which is uh, still a little bit bigger uh, than the uh, Concavenator. And the Concavenator, of course, has that really, really unique sail or hump or whatever you want to call it. And it's a really distinguishing feature from any of the other creatures. The only creature really that has anything similar to that is the Spinosaurus of course with its sail. But the Concavenator of course has a way more uh, weird and uh, distinguishable uh, shape to that uh, hump or sail at the back. But in general the Concavenator has been requested by the whole community for a really long time now. It was probably like one of the first creatures to get modded into the first game and also one of the first creatures to get modded into the second game as well. So that means that I'm probably not the only one who's really really excited for this creature and after it being requested for such a long time, I think uh, that Frontier really, really delivered. Uh, I think they did a great job at bringing this animal back to life. Uh, the skins are really, really great. Uh, like pretty much all of the skins are really, really awesome. Uh, you have uh, the base skins even, like already the base skins without the patterns already look really good because you have that sort of spiky uh, counter shading going on and that looks really cool. You have always like three or four different tones sort of layered on top of each other uh, for the base skin. And then you get the pattern on top of that which, ad which adds like an awesome uh, color to the snout, especially like uh, one of the patterns that adds like makes uh, the whole snout really, really colorful. And then you also have uh, that uh, little stripe on the back and the stripe as well on the sail. So yeah, the skins are really great. I also really like uh, all of the little paleo sort of uh, easter eggs or little designs uh, that this creature has. For example, the quills, uh, which were actually uh, found evidence for in the Congavenator uh, skeleton. And of course, they also just really make up for a cool feature. Like, uh, for example, the raptors from Jurassic Park 3 also had some kind of quills. And that was really, really loved by everyone and everybody really universally agrees that that's a great dinosaur design. Also, there were a lot of prints found, uh, sort of imprints uh, from the scales uh, of the concavenator. And one of those were the scales at the bottom of the belly. And those uh, were found to be very, very snake-like, uh, sort of having these like big, uh, pretty rectangular shaped scales. And that is also present on the Jurassic World Evolution 2 model. So yeah, whoever designed that did a really, really great job on the concavenator. And I'm super happy to add it uh, to this park and to ad also add it to my future parks. But yeah, anyways, that's everything I want to say in today's video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the speed build. Uh, I hope you enjoyed what I built for the Concavenator because I personally had a lot of fun building that and I really like how it turned out as well. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for my future content. Stay tuned for the uh, build for the Gigantoraptor dropping probably tomorrow. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Enjoy the cinematics and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.